Hey, what's up everybody? This is Muth24, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Death Note, Another Note, the Los Angeles BB Murder Cases novel. Uh, this is a tie-in to the Death Note anime series, and actually takes place before the series starts, dealing with uh, Naomi Misora, who was the fiancé to Ray Penber in the anime series, and then uh, L and Beyond Birthday, who is a uh, serial killer who is making all these uh, murders around Los Angeles with people whose uh, names begin, uh, their first name and their last name both begin with the same letter. And there's more that plays into that as, as the series goes, as the story goes on. Um, but I won't spoil anything in terms of the uh, novel or the actual anime for anyone who's watching this, as it'll be completely spoiler free. Um, though I will go into details as to what, you know, the novel entails, obviously. So, all this takes place beforehand, and because of that, it's not going to feel quite the same as the Death Note series, because the fact that you're missing all the, you know, the core characters, with the exception of L. Um, but that said, I, I really did enjoy it. It still had that um, whole air of, of uh, I guess, espionage that surrounds any of the L scenes in the anime. Um, with the presentation of the actual novel here. I really like the way that the uh, the slip cover here on the front works, uh, that only covers so much of the, the actual book, because um, you can pull that off and see that the rest of it is black underneath. So if you don't want that on there, you can, uh, you know, keep it all in the, the black cover there. But uh, along the spine, you still got the same silver print there. Pretty plain on the back. Um, flipping it open. There is some really nice artwork inside of here. Um, there's not a lot of it, but I do like the way that it looks. Um, like there in the front. Let's see. There's like little um, sketches before the start of each chapter. Yeah, like that one that's honestly kind of creepy. But um, all of the images I use in here in... Uh, one way or another, tie into the uh, events of the anime. Uh, let's see if I can find the one with all the Shinigami skulls. Yeah. So there you've got one with all the Shinigami skulls. Um, now, the thing about this that um, really kind of caught me off guard when I was reading it is that it's, you know, told from Naomi Musora's perspective and um, and her interactions with Elle and everything, which makes sense, but all of that is recounted from uh, the perspective of Mello. Um, and so that takes place, his recounting of this takes place, um, you know, between the point where he's first introduced and then the end of the series, sometime in between there. Um, I, it's been a little while since I read this, so I don't remember exactly when, but you know, some, somewhere in that time frame. But the way he speaks in this, or I guess the, the way he delivers the story, rather, uh, in his writing, seems really out of character compared to how he acts in the anime. Um, he seems a lot more calm and collected than he does when he has, you know, spurts of, I guess, uh, anger or frustration in the, in the series. Um, he doesn't seem quite as spastic, um... Which was just odd. It's, it's not a bad thing, it's just really weird, I guess, is what, uh, the only way I can describe it. Um, there are a couple characters in here, and, and this ties in with the whole um, victims that Beyond Birthday is, is going after. Um, and that is that some of the names are completely ridiculous. Like, I know in the series, you know, Light, okay, maybe it was a little, you know, exaggerated just for the sake of having a, a, a recognizable name, but it's it's not anything real out of the ordinary, I guess, and, um, you know, same goes for Misa or whatever, Misa Mane, and then, um, with this, though, you've got people like, um, Backyard Bottom Slash and Quarter Queen, it's just a little bit, um, more fantastical in the way they go about giving these characters names and stuff, so I wasn't too keen on that, it's not, it doesn't really drag the novel down all that much, it was just, I don't know, a little nitpick that I had with it. Um, also, the fact that they try and, um, throw at you some new 
events a couple points in the novel. Again, it's not huge, but it, it was one thing that I found a little bit annoying was the um, the fact that they try and throw in some sort of World War Three, which the series never even mentioned once. Um, it, it's referenced, I think, once in the novel as some some event that happened prior to uh, the start of all this, that there was some Third World War, and then that shapes the world to come. I don't know. It was weird. Uh, Mello mentioned it, but at any rate, again, very small uh, nitpick. For the most part, the novel is uh, very well written. Um, I'll admit, I was kind of just throughout reading this, I felt it was kind of okay until about the last two chapters where things really picked up, and then I was actually quite impressed with it, because a lot of times, you know, people will do a marketing tie-in like this, and it's just kind of to make a buck real quick, and it's not really to explore uh, the actual universe of the story all that much more. Uh, but with this one, I felt they did a really good job. Um, you know, again, it's not going to be the greatest novel you'll ever read, but I think for what it is, it's pretty well done. Um, so if you liked Death Note, if you liked Elle's character, um, and wanted to learn more about uh, what, uh, Whammy's house, and um, even maybe a little bit more about Mello, uh, this might be something you'd be interested in checking out. Uh, if you're looking for something more about Light, um, Misa, the the um, Japanese task force, uh, all the stuff that happens during Death Note, this isn't really going to cover that, so you might be a bit disappointed, but... Uh, yeah, if, if you're a fan of Death Note, you might uh, consider checking this out. And with that, I will see you guys next time.